I'm Contact 7 investigator Jennifer Kovaleski. In the next half hour, I'm sharing one of the most important and heartbreaking stories I've ever covered. The story of Ty Tesserero, a 10-year-old boy killed at the hands of his own father, and the system his family says failed to protect him. Anthony Tesserero had no business being in the same room as his son Ty. He was a terror to his ex-wife and anyone he saw as a threat. In short, he was a walking billboard advertising dangerous, erratic behavior. Despite countless court appearances and allegations, Tesserero was given one final weekend to spend with his son before relinquishing custody. Then he took out a gun, shot his son, and then himself. But this tragedy didn't happen spur of the moment. This was months, maybe even years in the making. This is the tragic, heartbreaking story of Ty Tesserero, a 10-year-old Lone Tree boy murdered by his dad, his mom who did everything she could to save her son, and a system that failed to protect an innocent boy. That where you live. He knows where I live? Yeah. And Papa wants you to tell me that? He says you're only going to be safe in the real Hawaii. In the real Hawaii, huh? Uh-huh. OK. Well, this is a story about control, online harassment, and a 10-year-old boy caught in the middle. Did they protect your son? No. A fatal encounter the boy's mother says could have been prevented. There was so many agencies were involved, so many. I begged, talked to, can try to convince everybody to, to do something. Let's go back to early Saturday morning, September 21st. Jing Tessarero wakes up to a chilling email in her inbox. The author, her ex-husband, Anthony, telling her, by the time you finish reading this, Ty will be moments away from joining me in the afterlife. It's pretty much like suicide note. And he said he was going to take my son with him. And I called 911. Jing got in the car and drove to her ex's Lone Tree apartment. I just kept waiting for the ambulance. And I was hoping there was going to be an ambulance. But no ambulance would show up. And he said they both were dead in the house. Her ex-husband shot her son, Ty and then turned the gun on himself. Heartbroken. I don't know, I don't even know the words. What else, I'm feeling angry, upset, um, regrets, and. Less than 24 hours before. We had an awful hearing at the family court. I was gonna get custody of my son. But somehow Ty still goes home with his dad. Did you want your son to go with his dad that night? No. No, we even told the judge more than once that we were worried. We were concerned for Ty's safety. She did anticipate an order being issued over the weekend for Ty to be removed. Within eight hours, Ty was murdered. Caroline Cooley is Jing's attorney. Her firm specializes in complicated family law, but she says this case is different. In 20 years, I have never had a case that where a child has been so systematically, methodically, consistently alienated, and no change is occurring, and no systems responding to it. To understand what Jing's ex did, they played audio recordings in court. He doesn't want to be with you. Yeah. He hates you. AJ, can you just let me talk to my son? No, no I cannot. Go get a police officer. Come on. No. She says this happened almost every time Jing tried to pick up Ty for her court-ordered parenting time. Like it matters if she mad. She lied to us, Ty. Come you on. You know what piece of crap she is. No, yeah, she's hi. lying to you. Ty, can you just she's listen lying. to Mama for you a minute? You know how she lies. She's gonna grab you. Come on. No. Ty was just his tool, and Ty is just being used. Jing's ex also had a mandatory protection order to stay away from her. How many times did he violate that protection order? I can't count. I, my opinion, there was so many, so many. There's, yeah. And what did police, what did the court system, what did DHS do? Nothing. Nobody did anything. An order that also should have kept him from having a gun. But the abuse doesn't stop there. Anthony took his threats online, where he used open sites like cheaterreport.com to destroy Jing and her new husband's reputation. The online post never stopped, never stopped. It would ongoing till last weekend. The same website where he would post his suicide note, his final message of control, a message Jing says he never should have been able to write. He lost and he had to take time with him he, because that's the only thing he could control and that night was Ty. What do you want done? I want there to be a formal investigation. 
I would like the governor to get involved. This is not right. This something needs to be done. You know, the kids shouldn't be. Kid knows. They know. Douglas County's Human Services Department says the entire community is grieving. State law prevents them from releasing details about child welfare matters. But we are told the state is conducting a review of what happened, and those findings will be made public. And while there's no doubt who murdered Ty, there are plenty of questions about why this little boy was ever in harm's way. Governor Polis tells Denver 7 he is closely monitoring the state investigation and whether the court system failed to see the warning signs. The family is asking for an independent investigation, but so far Governor Polis has stopped short of that. So with hundreds of pages of court documents, email after email, where police, prosecutors, DHS were asked to do something, why did no one intervene? Why did no one listen to the pleas for help until it was too late? She's not your mother, Ty. She's a piece of crap. Remember how she cheated on Papa and how she lied? Mom, yeah. Yeah, Mom, remember that forever. On Papa. The audio recordings tell the real story of the abuse. A controlling ex-husband who brainwashed his son, Ty, and refused to let his mom pick him up for her court-ordered parenting time. AJ, can you stop talking? No, I can't, because you're a piece of shit. Talking bad about me in front of Despite Ty. the mandatory protection order she had against her ex, Anthony, which should have prevented this, Jing Tessarero says the emotional and psychological abuse never ended. His threats, he's using Ty, threatened me since the very beginning, since the very first day I wanted to be out of his control. He even took those threats online where he destroyed her and her new husband's reputation and anyone else who got in his way. He was going to Google for everything and any professional that was involved was being threatened and I think they didn't want to deal with him. New emails going all the way back to May of 2018 show Jing's attorney Caroline Cooley alerted police and the court system that Anthony has been wrongfully keeping the minor child for the last 56 days. She demanded a criminal investigation for violating his protection order, noting there has been an ongoing pattern of mental abuse by father with the minor child. I requested Department of Human Services multiple times to reopen the case to assume jurisdiction, my requests were rejected. In August, it continues. So Jing's attorney reaches out to Douglas County Human Services directly, writing, we have at least three police reports and now a DHS call in the last 75 days. And nobody wanted to investigate. We talked to the police. We tried to file a police report because it was, we couldn't prove that him. It would take 15 months before Jing would finally get her day in court, a day when the judge finally saw her ex for who he really was. The last day Jing would see Ty alive. Ty should have been moved from father's custody and put into mother's custody 15 months ago. We requested it. Our request was denied. The judge planned to give Jing custody, but took the weekend to write her order, letting Ty go home with his dad. Less than 24 hours after the custody hearing, Anthony shot his son and then turned the gun on himself. That kid went through so much. <laughs> He tried so hard just to not make things worse for me. Much more on this heartbreaking investigation after the break. Welcome back to a Denver 7 special presentation. The murder of an innocent 10 year old and how the system failed to protect him. So many cries for help, unanswered. Even while neighbors say there were obvious warning signs, they knew something was wrong. Cries for help everyone seemed to ignore. The family you're about to meet tried to call DHS, but didn't have all the details. They too can't understand how the system failed Ty. This is the letter that Contour 39 put on our doors telling us about this. Lee Woods woke up to this letter on his front door, alerting him to a fatal incident at his Lone Tree apartment complex. Keep in mind, this is six days after it happened. Didn't hear nothing about it until yesterday. Woods would later learn the heartbreaking news. When I talked to my wife, I said, yeah, this, it happened right here in the complex. Look it up. So she looked it up and then called me back squalling. She said, Lee, it's Ty. His daddy killed him. That's the way we found out. Ten-year-old Ty Tessarero's father killed him and then turned the gun on himself. Hours before, he was going to lose custody of his son. The same little boy his wife and two sons first met over the summer. Never met the father. My boys, Kobe Dean and Kane, would be at the pool. He would come in. This is when Wood says the first warning signs surfaced. Every time we seen him, he was always by himself. 
He says Ty was always alone at the pool, something that concerned his wife, Gail. So she decided to tell apartment management. They had had problems, complaints with his father and Ty uh, about Ty being left by himself. Uh, said that they would reach out to somebody. It's unclear if anyone ever reached out. But Wood said his wife then started exchanging text messages with Ty, where he confided in her that his dad would lock him up in his room. But he was worried about his daddy finding the text messages that he was sending Gail. He wanted to see his mother, but he was told his mother was on drugs and she was in Hawaii. More lies from dad and text messages they now see as cries for help from a 10-year-old boy trapped in an unspeakable situation. Heartbroken. Uh, makes me feel like I could have done more, which I didn't. Even if it doesn't seem right, if a kid reaches out to you, you need to listen and talk to somebody for that kid. Don't just let it go to the side. One of the big questions in this case is how did Anthony have access to a gun? Jing's ex had a mandatory protection order to stay away from her and not harass her, an order filed for domestic violence. That means he should have never had a gun. One of the many failures in this case. I was a, such a sweet kid. <laughs> he has so much potential. Ty Tessarero should be looking forward to his 11th birthday and the start of his new school year. He should be, he should be back in school and play with the kids. Instead, his mother Jing is getting ready to bury her firstborn and fighting to change the system she says failed her. Did they protect your son? No, nobody did. Her ex shot her son and then turned the gun on himself, just hours after he learned he was going to lose custody of Ty. But the Douglas County judge let him go home with dad while she finished her written order. <sighs> Ty shouldn't have been there in that house. He's a very good actor. I think he convinced everybody, everybody, the police, the caseworker, the judge, multiple judges, the school. So you had a mandatory protection order? Yes. And what did that say? No harassment, no stalking, um, no contact, no third party contact. A protection order she's had since 2015, which should have prevented her ex from ever having a gun. A state law passed in 2013 says domestic abusers with protection orders have to turn over their firearms. In Anthony's case, Jing's attorney, Caroline Cooley, says that never happened. It is required that there be a certification that the defendant does not have any weapons and that certification needs to be filed with the court. That certification never happened. One of the countless failures in the system meant to protect Ty. The weapons were not removed and the information that I have is that the weapon used in this case matched one of the weapons listed in the affidavit on the prenuptial agreement. A gun Anthony should have been forced to surrender used to do the unthinkable. <sighs> I don't want this ever happen again. I don't want another kid get hurt because of manipulating parents. We have more on this investigation right after the break. Welcome back to a Denver 7 special presentation, the murder of an innocent 10-year-old and how the system failed to protect him. A professional tied to the case goes before our cameras and sounds the alarm about this father's manipulative tactics to keep control of his son. We're revealing the paper trail showing the extreme measures this man went to to get what he wanted. My first thought was, how the heck did he go to unsupervised visits? How did he have the opportunity to kill his son? She may be in the shadows. Her voice may be disguised. Just to protect my family and retaliation against me. But she can't stay quiet any longer. Hopefully prevent this from happening to another child. 
She's a professional who worked the case. I feel like they catered to this man's behavior. Now taking us inside the Douglas County Department of Human Services. Do you think the system failed, Ty? I do. An agency charged with protecting children, she says gave in to a bully and allowed a domestic violence abuser to work the system. Maybe fear. Maybe they were scared of him. He had way more power than he should have ever been given. Decisions that would end up costing 10-year-old Ty Tessarero his life. Anthony Tessarero would kill his son and then himself hours after being told he was losing custody of Ty, but could spend the night with him. I believe this whole case was about control. To understand what led up to Ty's murder, our informant takes us back to 2016 when social services first got involved. Records show the court ordered Anthony only be allowed to have supervised visits with Ty. At the same time, DHS employees were actively investigating whether Anthony was even to be a parent. I witnessed military punishment, sit-ups, push-ups. At one point, I witnessed him taking food from the child. And she isn't the only one who reported disturbing behavior between Ty and his father. A September 2016 report from a visitation supervisor details how Anthony grabbed the child's arm too tightly. Child was crying, saying, just stop it, Papa, all in front of a DHS worker paid to supervise visits. What this professional can understand is how the court would later grant Anthony 50-50 parenting time. At any point, did you think this was a man fit to be a father who should have 50-50 parenting time? When I saw the story on the news, I was actually quite shocked that he even had his kid unsupervised. Even more shocking, she says, given that Anthony had actually threatened and intimidated several people working the case, including her. Anthony stalked me um, down to family members. He did that to install fear. So he would say something like what to you? I saw your German Shepherd in the backyard last night. Or how's your husband doing? And then name his name. Did you submit documents to DHS that laid out what you experienced? Yes, they were well aware of it. They were also well aware that he had done it to their own caseworkers. Warning sign she says DHS completely ignored. The level of threats that he would make and the stalking behaviors, in my opinion, should have terminated visitations, should have terminated child contact. Instead, the contact she and other professionals had with the family was terminated which is exactly what Anthony demanded. Anybody that he didn't feel that was in his corner. We now have proof of how far his threats went. Court records obtained by Contact 7 Investigates show a doctor discharged Ty over his father's behavior. Writing in this letter from July of 2016, as you know, his father has previously threatened my office manager with a lawsuit. Now he's resorted to defaming me and harassing my patients on the internet. I cannot tolerate this type of verbal abuse from his father. He would continue to manipulate people till he eventually got what he wanted. Then there's this email sent to the child family investigator in the most recent case. If even one of your actions or recommendations brings harm to the child, there will be ramifications for you and yours for many years to come. Threats on his life and another person forced off the case. I think dad knew how to work the system, knew how to work the professionals. A pattern of threats and intimidation. But at the same time, I think the professionals let him work them. This professional says DHS failed to take seriously. Failures which led to the murder of a 10-year-old boy at the hands of his own father. I think laws need to change. DHS says it can't comment on child welfare matters, but an email sent from a DHS attorney to the attorney for Ty's mom says it all. John Thurkell wrote, there are many what-ifs in this tragic situation, but there is one certainty. Only one person is responsible for the tragic loss perpetrated here. The system is broken. I also feel there is enough warning signs for this child not to go back to him. Our repeated requests to sit down with Douglas County DHS have been denied. As we've mentioned, the state is investigating, which will hopefully give us a much better idea of how the system failed Ty. Welcome back to a Denver 7 special presentation the murder of an innocent 10-year-old, and how the system failed to protect him. Domestic violence abusers are supposed to turn over their weapons in Colorado, but we're finding it doesn't always happen. Anthony Tessarero was one of those abusers who never should have had a gun, but clearly did. District Attorney George Brockler says the law isn't working. This is obviously an extremely difficult case. 
especially in the rear view mirror. The tragic murder of 10 year old Ty Tessarero at the hands of his own father is hard for anyone to understand. This is the worst conceivable outcome to any one of these domestic violence type cases. The worst conceivable outcome, Ty's mother Jing Tessarero says could have been prevented. If the system had done its job, and listen to her pleas for help. Do you believe your office did everything it could to step in here, or in hindsight, could you have done more? You can't help but ask, should we have done something different? Could we have achieved something different? District Attorney George Brockler says a Colorado gun law passed in 2013 is also failing to protect domestic violence victims like Jing and her son, a law which should have prevented Anthony Tessarero from ever having a gun. Problem is, that law does not work. The law says domestic abusers with protection orders have to turn over their firearms within 72 hours, fail to do so, and the court shall issue a warrant for their arrest. But the courts have denied these motions, saying they won't grant an arrest warrant for non-compliance in these cases. Every single county court judge signed off on an order that said, no, we're not going to do it and we don't think the law requires us to do it. Uh, that left us with no other options. Uh, it's a law that is toothless and largely unenforceable. Anthony never turned in his gun, even after his ex-wife filed a mandatory protection order against him. A gun he never should have had, used to do the unimaginable. They need to acknowledge that this law is ineffective. It does not work, not by word and certainly not by practice, and it needs to be changed if that's our goal. Denver 7 is committed to staying on top of this story, digging for answers and pushing for changes at the state level. Just like Ty's mom, we want to make sure this never happens again. Here on our Denver 7 streaming app, there's much more to our investigation. We take you inside the final custody hearing where a judge found Anthony had zero credibility, but still somehow didn't remove Ty. This all happened just eight hours before the murder. Just click your back button and scroll down to the Contact 7 Investigate shelf to watch all of our stories. I'm Contact 7 investigator Jennifer Kovaleski. Thank you for watching.